the last three weeks were fantasy basketball perfection. The amount of games being played allowed fantasy managers to stream freely. It was a beautiful thing, a fantasy utopia, if you will. But the next few weeks are going to be fantasy basketball chaos. In this episode, we're going to do our very best to prepare you to win your matchup in the fantasy basketball playoffs. We believe every NBA fan that plays fantasy football should also play fantasy basketball. Bet Online is your bracket headquarters for this season because the tournament is here. With the best bracket contest out there and odds, lines, and info on every game and every round right up until the national championship. You can access the most up-to-the-minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or your mobile devices. And even track your bracket real-time all the way through the tournament. Head to Bet Online today and get in on all the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, the game starts here. Man, it has been a crazy, crazy fantasy basketball season. If you are tuning in live with us, do me a big favor. Let me know where you're checking in from. But also, if you could drop your questions in the chat at the end of this episode, we're going to answer as many questions as possible. I want to let you know that I am really, really excited about serving you with this show. But also, man, we're winding down the, the NBA season. So it's always a little bittersweet for me. This is our third season of doing the, the channel here, and we're just super grateful for everyone who supports. Now, with that being said, let's dig in to the top 10 waiver wire targets you need to focus on for week 22 of the fantasy basketball season. So the first guy is somebody that we've talked about on the channel, and I think he's going to have some value down the stretch. Now, the first guys I'm going to talk about are really guys that you might want to hold on to ride on out in the playoffs, but I'm going to talk about specific streaming targets a little later on that will work on those low volume days, the days where you don't have many players player playing. I have some some nuggets for you later on, so make sure you stick around for that. But the first guy we want to talk about is the man who posterized, the man who posterized Victor Webinyama, Trace Jackson Davis. He's only rostered in 14.2 percent of ESPN leagues, but there has been a 10 percent increase in the last couple of days. So watch out for that. Over the last seven days, he is averaging 13.7 points per game. Come on, man. Eight rebounds, two assists, 0.3 steals. Eh, but check this out. Listen up close. You're going to love this one. 2.3 blocks per game. What? Where they do that at? I'm just saying. Over the last seven days, your man is a block machine. So for me, he's the kind of player you want to hold on to. Again, start to gauge your team to see who are ex who, who the expendable assets are. And if you could put a person like Trace Jackson Davis in the mix long term, it could help you win your fantasy championship. The next player I want to talk about is someone, again, we have discussed on the channel. And last week, he had kind of a crummy, crummy schedule. This week, not so much. He kind of has a, a standard schedule, but again, is someone that could contribute to you winning your championship down the stretch from the Charlotte Hornets. Once again, my man, Vasily Misic. Now, word on the street is your man was no joke in Europe, and people are still sleeping on him. Yo, I heard he won an MVP over there. Like, this guy is for real, and there is no sign 
of LaMelo Ball making a return to to hero, a heroic return to your squad, right? So it's like, for me, I'm really locked in on who can provide the value now. He's only rostered in 7.3% of ESPN leagues. Over the last seven days, he's averaging 28.5 minutes per game, up from 17.7 minutes per game that he's averaging on the season. He's averaging 14 points per game over the last seven days, two rebounds, 3.5 assists, and eh, about half a steal and half a block. So you are going to get some value from him, and he's going to have spikes. So it's someone that I'm looking at. On the 13th of March, he went bananas for 25 points, eight assists, two steals. Like just the kind of player that can be a, you know, a game changer in terms of you pursuing that fantasy basketball championship. The next player we want to take a look at is someone we haven't talked about so much on the channel. And honestly, a lot of people are talking about him, and I just felt like, you know what? I'm trying to find 10. Everybody else is feeling him. Not my favorite player on this list, but we'll talk about him none the less. I'm talking about your mans in them, not, man, not my mans in them, Corey Kispert. Corey Kispert over the last seven days is averaging 31.5 minutes per game, which is amazing. 13.3 points, 1.8 assists, 1.5 uh, I'm sorry, 1.8 rebounds and 1.5 assists, about a half a steal a game. Nothing sexy. It's not not anything I'm like running home to go tell my auntie and them about, but still someone you want to keep an eye on. Next up is someone I'm a lot more interested in and I think can have the, the same kind of impact as a Trace Jackson Davis of Vasily Misich. I'm talking about your man's in them. And my man, Trey Mann. My man, Trey Mann, see what I did there? Listen, over the last seven days, Trey Mann is averaging 29 minutes per game, 10 points per game, 3.5 rebounds, and you're going to love this one. Come close for this one. Trey Mann in the last seven days is averaging seven assists per game. Wait, I am not done. He is also adding one one steal per game, one steal per game. And his his season stats or season average, I should say, for steals is also one steal a game. So, like, that's something that we can bank on. I really, really like that. Next up, somebody that I honestly, if you would have told me that this brother was going to be on my list at any point of the season, I would have probably looked you in your face and told you, use a lie. It's no way, it's no way that this guy is going to be on any list that I dropped this year. Any positive list, I should say. He is not going to be on any of the waiver lists, and he hasn't been. But anything is possible. And like I said at the beginning of the video, this is going to be sheer chaos. Expect the unexpected. The next guy I want to talk about, to my surprise, probably not to yours because you are a fantasy basketball sicko and you're paying attention to everything that's coming out, but I got to talk about him. Yep. James Wiseman. What? 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 Robin, who? Who? Who did you? Who did you say? Yes, I said James Wiseman. Typically... Hot dog water, James Wiseman. Dumpster juice, James Wiseman. And no disrespect to James Wiseman. I'm just talking about your fantasy game, brother. Like I always say, the disclaimer is every NBA player is nice. There's no way you made it to the league if you – so there's no bad NBA players. Those are the best 450 players on the planet. But James Wiseman for fantasy? Come on, man. Over the last seven days, he's averaging 24 minutes per game. Yes, 12 points per game. Let's go. 7.3 rebounds. Huh? 2.3 assists. Eh. About 0.3 steals and a half a block. So I'd like to see more defensive stats from him, but the fact that he's grabbing seven boards and 12 points over the last over the last seven days is a remarkable feat. I would have never expected that uh, from him. 
James Wiseman, so I'm pleasantly surprised. But at the same time, this this is the silly season. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Next up, somebody we have talked about on the channel and we really love what's happening and the potential that this young man has. I'm talking about from the Portland Trailblazers. Delano Banton. Over the last seven days, Delano Banton is averaging 29.5 minutes per game, up from his season average of 15.8 minutes per game. On the on the in the last seven days, he's averaging 13.5 points, four rebounds, 2.3 assists, 1.3 steals. Yes. Listen, Anthony Simons banged up, right? There's Malcolm Brogdon banged up. There's a lot of opportunity for Banton. So if you grabbed him, I would see if you could ride it out. If you need to make moves to let him go so you can stream in other players, that's completely fine. But definitely pay attention to his progression over the last over the next few weeks. Next up. Uh, as you know, the Memphis Grizzlies have been a fantasy basketball triage emergency room. Like, really? Everybody's banged up. Everybody, Everybody's injured. We got John Morant, Marcus, Marcus Smart. The list goes on and on and on. Desmond Bain is in and out. We don't know what's happening. But there is still tons of value here. Another person that we love on the channel, talking about my man, Gigi Jackson. Over the last seven days, this is wild, yo. Get ready for this stat. Mm. Over the last seven days, Gigi Jackson is averaging 38.7 minutes per game. Top is off. Boobies is out. Hair blowing in the wind. Convertible status, yo. Your man is getting the run. Over... The last seven days, man, this gets good. This gets good. 23.7 points per game. What? Huh? Let that sink in. 23.7 points per game. Mm. Mm. In over the last seven days, 6.7 rebounds. Yes. Two assists and eh, one steal, no blocks. Listen, again, this is not something that's like the forever game. This is the next couple of weeks in the fantasy basketball playoffs. If you didn't start your playoffs in late March and you started later, like you might be starting your fantasy basketball playoffs like right now. You might be in your second week. You might be going into your finals. So this is the kind of guy that could put you over the edge. And you know how I do. When I when I go when I go Grizzlies, I go all the way Grizzlies. The next guy we want to talk about is Santi Eldama. Oh baby. Just like your man Gigi Jackson, he is cooking with hot bacon grease. No olive oil, no coconut oil, none of that natural stuff. I'm talking about the flesh of an animal used as cooking liquid that's what he's doing over the last seven days 35.7 minutes per game come on Whew. it's wild out here 18.7 points per game over the last seven days yo man yo i don't believe i'm about to read this listen let me let me get let me let me really lock in santi aldama is averaging 10.3 rebounds per game over the last seven days and I am not done. There's more. Three assists a game. Eh, check this out, though. Santi Aldama, over the last seven days, is averaging 1.3 steals per game. Yes. And I got more. Santi Aldama is also averaging one block a game. Mm, mm. I'm just saying, it's like being at the front row of the Jay-Z Rockefeller reunion tour. They got Dame Dash on the stage doing the, mm, 
home. They throwing up the rock. I'm just saying, this is wild. Are you hearing me? Your man is averaging 18 and 10 over the last seven days with 1.3 steals and one block. Come on, man. I'm 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 just trying to cook up value for y'all, man. I'm just saying. If you with me, please just just like the like the video if you're watching live. Let a brother know. And if you're watching a replay, please drop a like and let me know if you can feel the value seeping from the screen and from the daggone speakers of your device. I am just saying. We got more. Next up in the top 10. Wave of wire targets for week 22. This is a guy, man. He is taking full advantage of the opportunity that's being presented to him. Like it's it's clear as day. And again, we are in we are knee deep in silly season. Anything happens, expect the unexpected. People that you would have never even b- taken a look at, batted an eyelash at, are now the people who could lead you to your prize money, lead you to your bragging rights, lead you to your fantasy championship. This is my guy right now from the Boston Celtics, Peyton Pritchard. Over the last seven days, get ready to get blown away. He is averaging 35.2 minutes per game, up from 21.5 on a season. He's averaging 18.2 18.2 points per game, y'all. Mm. Up from 8.5 on the season, 8.7 on the season, I should say. 3.6 rebounds, eh, but check this out. If you are in a category league and you need assists, you you have found the man for the job in Pritchard. I'm talking about like he is Eli Ellis's uncle. If y'all know who Eli Ellis is, look him up. This is his uncle right here, unofficially. Your man is averaging eight assists per game over the last seven days. Huh? About a half a steal, no blocks. Listen, he is the type of player, when we talk about these wild cards, these game changers, these people who could push you over the edge and get you to the chip, he's the kind of guy. Or or he's the kind of guy this way. I'm pointing. Okay, cool. For my people who are listening, I'm playing games with the visuals on the screen here. And I have more for you. I have more. I I, I'm, I'm, I listen. You know, listen. At this point of the season, man, all I'm trying to do is get as many championships as we can. Last year, we had about 44 championships. I, I know we're going to do more than 44 because the community has grown, but... We can't, like, slack down the stretch. We got to be super fo- hyper-focused down the stretch to make sure that we win this chip. The next person going to round out our top 10 is somebody who has been popping up all over the place and had a really good run, then had a dud and was dropped in a lot of spots, but bounced back with a killer game from the Sacramento Kings, Keon Ellis. Mm-mm-mm. Silly season gold mine, Keon Ellis. Over the last seven days, Keon Ellis is averaging 29.3 points per game up from his, I'm sorry, minutes per game. My apologies. And if I said minutes and points earlier in the show, my apologies. The first one is always minutes. So 29.3 minutes per game over the last seven days, eight points, 3.5 rebounds, 2.8 2.8 assists, which is not sexy. But Keon Ellis is not known for his scoring, nor his rebounding, or his assists. What he is known for is his prolific defensive statistics. Oh, baby. I don't give a shit, Sue. Puppy, if you need defensive stats, this is your man, hands down. Over the last seven days, he is averaging, come here, two steals per game. That's good, right? 
but there's more. Over the last seven days, 1.8 blocks per game. Come on. With, huh? Are we speaking the same language? Listen, again, if you are in a category league and you need defensive stats, this is your guy. This is your guy. Mm -mm -mm. So, you know, every week I do extensive research. I'm like reading articles all over the Internet. I'm listening to my, you know, my fellow fantasy basketball analysts on Twitter, all over the Internet, uh, on YouTube. Like I'm watching the videos, everything. Some of these players I'm not really checking for, but these are the players that people are talking about. And I'm about to like run down the bonus round. So the top 10 are people that I'm really all for. Corey Kispert, I'm kind of on the fence, but everybody else I'm all for, and I would add them myself. These players, not all of them. Some of them are must-add players, you know, people that you really have to look at. But at the end of the day, I just got to provide the value. Let's go into the lightning round. Justin Champani. Mm, I like him. Aaron Nesmith, yes. Put him on your roster. Nick Richards, uh-huh. George Niang, with Mobley returning, not as high as I was on him, but still worth a look. Andre Drummond, eh, I don't know. Amin Thompson, yes. Simone Fontecchio, mm, let's see if he gets healthy. TJ McConnell, McConnell, yes. Josh Hart, yes. John Conchar, let's see. Luke Kennard, let's see. Nas Reed, maybe. Dennis Schroeder, eh, I'm kind of out on him. Jock Landell. Maybe. Jalen Suggs, yes. Jake LaRavia, yes. McBride, maybe. Kyle Anderson, yes. Paul Reed, absolutely. Put him on your roster. Bruce Brown, yep. Keontae George, must roster player. If you are in Dynasty and someone drops him, grab him quick. Like, that is a red alert. Denny Avdia, yes. Isaiah Hartenstein, yes. Kelly Aubrey Jr., yes. Rashawn Holmes, mm, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. So, I got something I want to cover really quick before we go into our next segment. So, the, I, I'm getting a lot of questions on TikTok, specifically on TikTok, about dropping certain players, right? So, people want to know, hey, hey, Robin, uh... Oh, I know you're busy, but if you can get back to me, just let me know because I got LaMelo Ball and, you know, I'm trying to figure out should I drop him because my playoffs start this week and I don't know what I'm going to do. Bro, listen, I love LaMelo Ball, but he ain't healthy. He ain't healthy. I don't think he's going to get healthy. With that said, if you need to, you don't have an IR spot, or you have an IR spot for a player that's on the brink of return, like let's say someone like Evan Mobley just came back. If you needed to put an Evan, Evan Mobley type player in there, okay, cool. That's what I'm doing. But we don't have any news on what's going to happen with LaMelo. So at this point, if you need to drop, it's completely fine. Now, if he comes back the last the last two days of your fantasy basketball championship and your the 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 opponent that you're facing in the finals grabs him and somehow gets him on his team the chances of LaMelo playing big minutes with only a few weeks left in a season are like it's a long shot it's it's a long shot so if you need to drop LaMelo drop him next Julius Randle if you need to drop him drop him quick OG and Anobi, if you need to drop him, go f drop it like it's hot. Get your Snoop Dogg on. Drop him like it's hot. Uh, Anthony Simons, same thing. If you need to drop him, just drop him. And then we had questions about um, Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram, like, I don't think he's going to get any major run down the stretch, but I would, be a, I would monitor the news to see if you can get more input on him before you drop him. But, again, if you're in the playoffs, like, what are, you, what are you holding him for? If you're down by 30 and it's the last week of your fantasy basketball playoffs or even if it's the first week and you're at risk of losing, you could drop any of those guys if you need to stream another player in. 
I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Listen, this is very important. If you are playing fantasy basketball, you need to be a two-way player. You need to play offense. You need to play defense. When you play offense, we're talking about you subscribing to our YouTube channel. Big shout out to our entire community. We just hit 10K followers this week. So this is our first episode since crossing that 10K um, milestone. And we're just super excited for everyone who supports what we do. But we we have a bunch of people who are not subscribed. So if you are watching this and you haven't subscribed, just take a minute and you can support the channel by doing that. Also, make sure you're active in the comments and please like the episode. Now on defense, what we need you to do is listen to the podcast. We have a podcast. It's available on on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts. We have a partnership with Believe, and we want to make sure that we're showing up for them as well. So please, if you watch the show on YouTube, also check out the podcast. If you just listen to the podcast, please go check us out on YouTube. You can do both. It is totally fine. If you want to, you can tag me on social media. Show me your daggone Spotify app that you're doing it, and I'll share that. Um, I'll share that link in my stories. Now, other ways that you can support the channel, we just got a brand new partnership. So, like, we got a couple of our um, community members who gave us, like, super thanks, where they give us, like, a little tip, which is really kind, and we appreciate that. We understand that not everybody, you know, that everybody doesn't have cash on hand to be, like, throwing five dollars to the fantasy basketball guy like i get it and i'm not listen you come here i do this for free i'm not trying to get rich off of this i'm doing this because i'm trying to build a community and i'm thinking about the long game of what we can do to bring attention not just to fantasy basketball but to nba fans in general right just giving us a place to hang chill and talk hoops but if you want to support we have a brand new partnership And through this partnership, you can help the channel, support the channel, but you can also get free stuff. The new partnership is with a company called Drip Shop, Drip Shop Live or Drip. Basically what it is, it's a live streaming sales kind of app where people sell their collectibles, their their sports cards, Pokemon cards, all of these kind of things on this platform and we just got a partnership with them. So if you want to support the channel, all you have to do is visit join.dripshop.live slash believe in fantasy. I'll repeat that. Join.dripshop.live slash believe in fantasy. And here's what drip will do for you. This is crazy, y'all. They will give you a sign-up bonus up to $250. And guess how much you have to pay? Absolutely nothing. All you have to do is open up the daggone, or your, your daggone um, browser on your phone. Please do it through your browser on your phone, or you can do it on your browser on your computer, and put in join.dripshop.live slash believe in fantasy. And then they're going to give you up to $250 for free. You can actually take the $250 credit and start shopping that night. You can buy yourself a, I got one of these. You can grab something like this. You can grab a graded Michael Jordan card. You can grab a a box of, of NBA Prism. You can buy... If you if you have kids and you want to get them like Pokemon, whatever you want to do, you can just pick what you want and you can actually use the credit immediately. No strings attached. And the most important part, you're supporting our channel and it costs you nothing. So please, if you hear the sound of my voice, whether you're watching or listening, visit join.dripshop.live slash believe in fantasy. The link will also be in the show notes, whether you're listening on your favorite podcast network or watching on YouTube so you can support like that. Now, back to the value. Oh, baby, we got more. So 
Next up, I want to take a look at the week 22 schedule. So on Monday, we have 11 games. On Tuesday, we have four games. Wednesday, we have 12 games. Thursday, we have two games. Friday, 12 games. Saturday, three games. And Sunday, 10 games. I told you, it's about to get wonky, y'all. Really, really wonky. The teams with four games, we have Atlanta, Brooklyn, Charlotte, Chicago, Cleveland, Dallas, Denver, the Warriors, Houston, Clippers, Lakers, the Knicks, Thunder, Sixers, Kings, Spurs, Jazz, and the Wizards. Three game teams. We got Boston, Detroit, Indiana, Memphis, Miami, Milwaukee, Minnesota, Pelicans, Orlando, Phoenix, Portland, and Toronto. Now let's talk about the back-to-backs. The Monday-Tuesday back-to-back, we got Dallas and Sacramento. The Tuesday-Wednesday back-to-back, we got the Warriors, Lakers, and the Thunder. The Wednesday-Thursday back-to-back, we got Atlanta. The Thursday-Friday back-to-back, no teams have that. Friday and Saturday, Orlando has a back-to-back. Saturday and Sunday, no back-to-back. And this is very important, guys. There is a pseudo Back to back. What is a pseudo back to back? It's when you have two low volume days where you can actually stream in players, right? But in the middle of those two days, there's a there's a high volume day or a day where you can't stream players in. So Thursday and Saturday, we have that back to back. Friday, you will not have the ability to stream in players, but on Thursday and Saturday, you can. Atlanta, Boston, and Milwaukee, I mean, and the Pelicans. So Atlanta, Boston, Milwaukee, and the Pelicans have that Thursday and Saturday pseudo back-to-back. This is critical, y'all. And in a minute, we're going to talk about some players that you can actually target who play for those teams. And here are the teams with the best schedules. We have... Uh, the, I have a typo here. My apologies. This is actually supposed to be three quality games. This is not four quality games. So my apologies. The, uh, Milwaukee Bucks and the Pelicans have three quality games, three quality games. And the Atlanta Hawks and the Boston Celtics have two quality games. The streaming days are Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Those are the days that you can stream again. Three quality games, Milwaukee and the Pelicans. Two quality games, Atlanta and Boston. If you are watching online on YouTube, there is a typo here. So I hope you are not watching uh, without listening. I'm just saying. I am just saying. All right. So I promised you guys some suggestions for players that you should target who are playing that Thursday, Saturday back-to-back, but just players who are on those teams that we talked about who have the best schedule. So the first team we're going to talk about is Milwaukee. So Milwaukee, again, it's going to be slim pickings. Like Giannis is not available. Brooke Lopez will likely not be available. But if these other players are available, these are people you need to pounce on as you get to the days where they're available, right? Or oh, where, where their um, where their value is increased for streaming, I should say. Milwaukee, we got Bobby Portis, Malik Beasley, and this is where it gets kind of ugly, guys. This is the witching hour. This is not sexy, but if I can get three quality games from these guys, I'll consider it. Patrick Beverly, Jay Crowder, Pat Connaughton. And that's my cutoff. Like, I'm not taking Giannis's brother, right? I'm just saying. Like, there's, there's a limit to how low I'll go. And, like, Pat Connaughton, Connaughton is not, it's not a sexy pick. But three games of him versus having someone on your bench that you can't even use because you have so many players playing, then you have to get Pat, even if he's getting 10 or 15 points a game. I'm just saying. The next 
group of players are from the Pelicans. Trey Murphy is probably not available, but if he is and you're in a shallow league, his value increases this week. Herb Jones might be available. If he is, grab him. Larry Nance Jr., Najee Marshall, and here's my cutoff point, Jose Alvarado. Huh? If Jose Alvarado is available and heading into those those um those quality games, he's somebody that I would definitely consider picking up. Next from the Atlanta Hawks, um Bogdan Bogdanovich, DeAndre Hunter, Bruno Fernando. Definitely players that you would take a look at, especially for that Thursday and Saturday pseudo back to back. So I would grab them on the Thursday. And when I say grab them on the Thursday, I'm I'm really meaning to say grab them on the Wednesday as soon as tip-off hits. So you could wait until Thursday, but chances are they'll be gone if they're not already gone. So the hack is set yourself a little alarm. As soon as tip-off happens on Wednesday, you can grab players for the next day and not be impacted. So if let's say you have somebody that you're willing to drop, like... I don't know, Vasily Misic. Let's say you really like him, but you know that he doesn't have games the next day. Let him have his tip-off if he's playing. And as soon as tip-off happens, you can drop him and add one of these players. So for the Thursday and Saturday, pseudo back-to-back, you want to hold these guys to get that value. You're getting two games for one ad. Uh, Bogdan, Bogdanovich, DeAndre Hunter, and Bruno Fernando. And then for the Boston Celtics, Peyton Pritchard, we talked about him earlier. Al Horford, Sam Hauser, and Luke Cornett. You have to hold for that Thursday and Saturday pseudo back-to-back. You have to hold. Okay. So next up, we're going to answer some questions from our live stream if we have some folks with questions. And also, we're going to answer some questions from our Discord community. We'll start with Discord. This one is from Zynax. He says, what's your opinion on Keon Ellis? Scoot Henderson and Keontae George, both in and outside of fantasy. For fantasy, I think all three are relevant right now. I think Keon Ellis is a flash in a pan. I don't think he's going to have long-term value in the future. Scoot Henderson will. I think that rookie point guards have struggles. You know what I'm saying? And I think that a player like Scoot Henderson has exhibited like He has elite level talent. He just needs to kind of find his NBA groove. The point guard is a difficult position, especially for a young guard. Keontae George, really love him. He might be one of the best picks of that draft, and I think that um, he will have value for years to come in real life and in fantasy. Thank you. Great question. Um, Next question is from... Zoom in. He says, what do I do with Jeremy Grant? He's getting ruled doubtful mostly every game now, but I'm in the first seed and I have a bye week and I want to pick up Scoot. What should I do with him? It's okay to drop Jeremy Grant. It's the end of the season. Like they're not, they're not pressed to be like, Hey, we got to get Jeremy Grant back on the floor so we can get this 11th seed. Like nobody's like in Portland, Portland is not trying to, to win right now. They're trying to test out what they have and Jeremy Grant is, is, is a veteran, and they're not trying to see what they have in him because they know exactly where they stand with him. And let's head over to the, to the live chat now. So live chat, let's see what we got. This is from Jacob. Jacob says, is Bain going to play tomorrow? I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I would pay attention to what's happening. Like, listen, uh, and this is me. I'm going to keep it all the way funky with you. At this point in the season, the Memphis Grizzlies have no reason to play Desmond Bain. So I told people who had him, like, you got to really, really be mindful of the how high you're setting your goals and expectations for him because chances are this is something we're going to go through the last couple of weeks. I love this one. This is from Nelmar. He says, 
Nance or Alvarado this week? If I could pick one of the two, I would take Nance most likely, but I'm okay with Alvarado. If I could take both of them, I would take both of them, depending on how many waiver acquisitions you have in your league. But again, these are the players that we talked about. They have the best schedule. Huh? Let that sink in. The Pelicans and the Dagon Bucks. If you can grab players from them, I'm telling you, you're going to need them. The thing is, you want to let that Monday game go because Monday is going to be a high-volume day. So get through Monday. As soon as tip-off comes on Monday, start grabbing players. But I, I, I love that question. Next one is from Dammy Activates. He says, what do I do with Olenek? It's okay to drop Olenek. I think that you let him play um, – as needed, if he if he's playing on a high volume day, and you got to drop him to get, you know, one of these players that we talked about from the the Pelicans, from the Hawks, from the the Celtics, or even the um the Bucks, then you got to do what you got to do. So don't get married to him. It's it's okay. Like this time of the season, Dami, like you got to be ruthless, cutthroat, no mercy. Like drop them when you got to drop them. This one's from Jacob. He says, what do I also do with Joel Embiid, but I'm up in the playoffs? Oh, man, if you have an IR spot and you want to hold him, you can. If you're struggling and you need the spot to put someone else in, then you can drop him at this point. But I, if you can hold him, it's okay. It's fine. I don't imagine that he's going to provide any significant fantasy value that if he does come back, but it's still Joel Embiid, right? Okay, hold up. I know that's not my little brother. Richard Nathaniel, blip, 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 blip. Congratulations. I'm, ass I'm assuming you're doing congratulations on that 10K. That's my little brother, Richard. God bless you, bro. I don't even think I've, I've ever seen you pull up to one of these before. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. What an awesome, awesome live stream. Very, very cool stuff. So, now that, now that you are ready to dominate week 22, check out our episode about how to win the rest of your fantasy basketball playoffs. This episode was presented to you by Bet Online. The game starts here.